This next chapter. Last day I forgot that, otherwise I would have finished last class only. That Maxwell. Okay, yeah, it's, uh, so, so, all the same yeah, time. Yeah. Ha, all the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So, the module for like uh, gas equations, do we have any uh, like numerical yeah. ones? Gas equations, yeah. which one? PV is also NRT. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So you will have some equations, yeah. uh, numerical ones. You will have that. So, you send some questions. Ha, ha, today only I send. You can solve those questions. Ha. On the group, you can check. Okay, what is thermodynamics? See, thermodynamics, thermo means heat and dynamics means what? Motion or flow. So in this chapter we we'll study about the flow of heat or the motion of heat, how it, how the heat flows. So we are going to study about the flow of heat. In this chapter we are, we are also going to understand whether the reaction is a spontaneous, a spontaneity? <laughs> what is the spontaneous process that we are going to understand? What are the different processes we have? Right? By which the state of a, a, a thing changes. So flow of heat, is spontaneity and process. Okay? Understood? So thermodynamics, we are seeing this is the another actually uh, chapter in which we deal with chemical reactions. Chemical reactions, we have three different chapters actually. Thermodynamics is one of the chapters, chemical equilibrium, chemical kinetics. These three chapters we are going to study to understand the chemical reaction properly. Thermodynamics gives you the information about spontaneity of a reaction. So like, C is, C is chemical equilibrium. T is thermodynamics, C K is chemical kinetics. Okay? So these three chapters, we are going to study about chemical reaction in these three chapters. Now what is the uses of this? Thermodynamics gives us the information that under a given set of condition, whether the reaction is possible or not. Okay? So what is the condition for a reaction to be feasible? Okay? And for that we have delta G, gives free energy. Delta G should be what? Delta G should be less than zero for any spontaneous reaction, and that we'll discuss how, right? So this chapter gives us the information about the spontaneity of any reaction. Chemical equilibrium deals with the direction of reaction, whether whether the reaction goes into forward direction or backward direction. So this gives you the information of direction of reaction, in which direction the reaction proceeds, obviously under a given set of condition. Chemical kinetics deals with the rate of a reaction. Rate of reaction means what? That at what speed the reaction is proceeding. Okay, after what time the reaction gets finished. Okay, so all these three different chapters we have which deals with the chemical reactions. Okay, so in this chapter we are going to understand about a given uh, a reaction and feasibility of that reaction. Okay, so there are a few terms in this chapter but that we have to understand first. And the first term we have here is system. What is a system? What is surroundings? <coughs> system and surrounding. What is the definition of a system? The thing which is under consideration. Under consideration, okay. It is anything, it is a part of a universe which is under consideration, okay. System plus surroundings. System plus surroundings is equals to the universe. Right? So right on system is anything which is under consideration. Okay? Surroundings is what? Surroundings which interacts with, it is again the part of a universe which interacts with, with system. Right? So suppose you have this universe and in this a bigger is there, in this speaker we have some gaseous molecules present, right? So we are trying to understand or read the properties of this gaseous molecule. So this gaseous molecule is the system, right? 
apart from this gases molecules everything is what surroundings right and both this collectively called as universe okay this is which separates the system and surroundings this part we call it as what the boundary okay boundary boundary is what which separates the system with surroundings okay now this boundary can be what it can be it can be adiabatic it can be insulated or it can be what permeable we can say we can say diathermic also there are many different things we will see that okay systems again it can be an open system it can be a closed system it can be a isolated system so there are three types of system we have so write down there are three types of system possible the first one is an open system what is an open system energy and which can transfer both matter and energy okay open system transfers both in short write down transfers both matter and energy next write down closed system exchange of exchange of only energy possible there is no exchange of matter in this because the system is closed there is no exchange of matter only exchange of energy isolated system no exchange of matter and energy no exchange of matter and energy okay when the system is closed then only energy can exchange so the system when the system is closed then only energy exchange because system is closed no so all these gases particles cannot come out but it can you know radiates the energy the heat energy is can radiates okay if it is isolated means there is no transfer of energy also possible close if it is there then matter obviously cannot transfer okay now the next thing uh, right on next state variable these are the variable we use to define the state of a system okay like in gases state the variables are what pressure volume and temperature so here also we have three different variable that is pressure volume and temperature right on these are the variables which these are the variables which is used to define variables which is used to define the state of a system example temperature volume pressure okay what is right pressure volume and temperature okay right on when all the state variable when all the state variable when all the state variable is fixed then we say that the system is at a particular state the system is at a particular state okay so at one state we'll have some pressure volume and temperature p1 p1 and t1 and it can change into p2 v2 and t2 okay so all the path or the method by which we can change any one of the state variable we can have more than one change also possible but if any one of the state variable is changing by which way that way we call it as what process okay so we have different different process isothermal you must have heard right isothermal process is what temperature, temperature constant isobaric temperature. pressure constant isochoric volume, volume constant volume. adiabatic there is no exchange of it so all these are processes in by this processes we can change any one of the or more than one state variable okay so the way or the path by which any one of the state variable changes those paths we call it as different different processes okay so we'll come to this process uh, later next point you write down there is uh, various thermodynamic properties write down next thermodynamic thermodynamic properties two types of thermodynamic properties we have one which depends upon mass and one which does not depend upon mass okay 
So first property, we call it as intensive property, which is independent of mass, right now. Intensive property. These are the properties which are independent of mass, does not depend upon mass. Independent of mass and it is non-additive also. Independent of mass and non-additive. Non-additive, you cannot add this. Okay, example you write down. This example is important. Okay, they ask question on this. Which one of these is intensive or extensive property? We cannot add. Suppose density. Density is intensive or extensive? Tell me. Intensive. Intensive. So it's not independent of mass. Huh? Density is what? Intensive, intensive property because it is independent of mass. Right? One glass of water you take or one bucket of water, the density of water won't change. Okay? So density is an intensive property. Okay? So density of, uh, suppose water you are taking and oil. So you cannot, if you mix these two, we cannot add, if they ask you what is the density of the mixture. You cannot add both density of water and uh, oil. That's what it is non-additive. Right? So write down the example here. Density, temperature, pressure, concentration, density, temperature, pressure, concentration. Concentration term means what? Molarity, molality, mole fraction. All these are intensive property. Okay? Density, temperature, pressure, concentration, boiling point, melting point, right? Molar heat capacity. What is molar heat capacity? Per unit mole if you calculate. Molar heat capacity and then a specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity. A specific volume also an intensive property. Vapor pressure is also intensive. A specific volume. Volume of unit gram or unit mass of a substance. So a specific term means we are talking about unit mass. Molar term means we are talking about unit mole. So whenever a specific and molar term is written, that's, that term is what? That term is intensive property. Because we are talking about one mole or one gram. Okay? Vapor pressure, write down next. Vapor pressure is also intensive property. Okay, it's important. Next you write down extensive property. Depend upon mass. Extensive property. It is additive in nature. Extensive property, additive in nature. Example you write down. Example write down mass, mole, volume, energy. Energy means internal energy, enthalpy, gives free energy, entropy, everything. Energy write down internal energy. Enthalpy, gives free energy, entropy. All these are extensive property. So Resistance, entropy. Yeah. Entropy, what is school in chapter? Yeah. 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 Right? So you, this thing you must take care of. Heat capacity is extensive, but molar heat capacity is what? Intensive. In specific heat capacity is intensive because we are talking about one mole or one gram. Okay, so this you must take care of. Next, you write down uh, one note. You write down here the ratio of two extensive property. The ratio of two extensive property will be an intensive property. The ratio of two extensive property will be an intensive property. For example, you see molarity, right? Molarity, how molarity is intensive or extensive? Intensive. Intensive, right? And it is equals to what? Mole divided by volume in liter. Correct? So mole is what? Intensive or extensive? This is extensive. Volume is what? Extensive. extensive. 
So ratio of two extensive property is intensive. Right? Similarly, density also you can see. Density is equal to what? Mass by volume. Mass by volume. Mass is extensive. Volume is extensive. And density is what? Intensive. So ratio of two extensive property is always intensive. Must remember that. Okay? So if you do not know some term formula, you know you can identify the formula, you can write and check whether it is a ratio of two extensive property or not. Okay? Next write down thermodynamic function. Hmm? Uh, then you have to see, but uh, uh, like for any example, if you see, uh, what what we can take any more than two examples? Uh, Suppose broader connection, they let one person there. Number of moles into molecular mass, it is extensive, both this is also extensive. So suppose you will have term like this, suppose P divided by Q into R, that's how you that's how you can do it. If you have more than two terms, you have so either you will have multiply here or multiply here. So when you multiply or divide, multiply like this, then the property won't change. Number of moles into molecular mass is the, is the mass of the substance. Extensive, extensive, extensive. But when you uh, take the ratio, the property changes. So with that, you have, may have the idea. Got it? Agar, suppose if this is extensive, this is extensive. So this whole term will be extensive. And if it is extensive, this whole term will be intensive. So molecular mass is independent of mass. So molecular mass is independent of No, it is mass. So it is an extensive property. Anyways, next write down thermodynamic uh, function. Thermodynamic function, again, we have two types. Thermodynamic function. Two types of thermodynamic function we have. The first one is state function. And the second one is path function. The state function, write down. These are the, write down, these are the term which depends upon, term which depends upon initial and final state only, which depends upon the initial and final state only and independent of the path followed. So what is this for? Huh? State function. State function. Depends upon the initial and final state only. For example, pressure, temperature, internal energy, enthalpy, gives free energy, entropy, volume, all these are state function. Okay? Point of this is what you see. Suppose at this we are considering two points A and B. At this point we we'll have certain pressure, volume and temperature. And at this point we have certain pressure, volume and temperature. Now when the by, by any process if this comes over here, there are many paths possible. One is this, another one is this, another one is this. Right. Infinite path possible. So you use internal energy. Huh? Use internal energy. Internal energy, enthalpy, gives free energy, entropy, volume. Okay? So when you are at this point, no matter what path you are following, the pressure will be P2 only. Volume will be V2 only. Temperature will be T2 only. So this is a state function which depends upon initial and final state, not on the path followed to gain this state. Right? Like for example, if I talk about work, right? Work done or heat. It is a state function or path function? Path function. Because the amount of work you are doing depends upon what path, what path you are following. Correct? So this path is, you can see it is the smallest path we have. So amount of work is what? Less. When you follow this path, when you go through this path, you have to do more work. 
right? So walk down is what? Walk down is a path function. Energy term is a path function. Okay. So all state functions and path functions together are state variables. No, no, no. We are talking about walk down and energy involved. Example is an example of path function. No, no, no. Path function will be energy and walk down. The example of path. That's what I'm saying. So second function you write down. Second function you write down. Write down. These are the terms. These are the terms which depends upon. <laughs> These are the term which depends upon the path followed or the path function. For example, heat and work. Heat and work. Right? Heat and work are the path function.